Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the draft function. Draft is a very powerful tool. Um, in this case I'm making a what would be the equivalent of a cast part. You're going to use this tool draft on parts such as um, cast parts as I just mentioned, forged parts, injection molded parts, and uh, the whole purpose of this is so you can draft the vertical walls so they release much easier as the tools come apart. So here I'm going to draft in the Z direction in this part. I may have a line defining my draft direction. My draft reference, where am I drafting from? Well I'm going to use what's called a parting face in this case. The reason why I'm using a parting face is I want to draft in both directions. I want to draft this from this face in in both directions. And you can see here I have draft both sides turned on. Faces to draft, this. Now that I have my draft in, I'm going to go and draft this body. Now there are instances where it's better to draft the independent bodies before you unite them. The reason being is because sometimes where a cylindrical face and a planar face come together may actually cause problems for the system generating, especially when uh, um, this face and the cylindrical face, the planar face and cylindrical face are tangent. A lot of times those areas have an issue with draft. Now, whoops, specify my vector. Stationary plane, same stationary plane. Faces to draft, these guys. Now, Something you should be wary of is when you are applying your draft, you want to make sure that you put your draft on the part before you put any of the edge fillets on. If you'll notice, this is a cylindrical face. It is smaller at the top. So if I drafted, let's say, these vertical edges, and then, uh, I apologize, if I put the edge fillet on and then drafted those vertical edges, what would end up happening is, is those radii on those fillets would shrink. So. I want to make sure that I apply my fillets or my edge blends to the model before or I'm sorry after the draft. So in this case there's my edge blend. Now you'll notice that when I put this edge blend on I pick those two faces or I should say two edges I apologize. Come in pick that edge and this edge and then do the same thing with that edge and this edge. <laughs> Select OK. Now that I have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and put on my edge blends over here and here. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and then the last edge blends that I need to put on are the ones across these top edges. Now, with my edge blends put on, we'll go ahead and put these on. I can go ahead and do my unite. I want to unite this and this. And then put on my final edge blend, going all the way around. Now, with the way that I have this built, I have the capability of making some modifications As you can see, I'm moving where it parts from. And now I have this bit of the radius that's coming in into this face. When I exit out of my sketch, you'll notice that it updates. Very clean, very simple. Let me go ahead and hide this surface. And you can see there is my parting edge. A lot of times you'll get uh, the, the parting line defined by engineering. They'll tell you that it needs to be in a specific location. Uh, so the part can be formed or the tool can actually be made. The depth of the, um, the, the, the tool can affect the final quality of the part, so the parting line may need to be move up or down based off of that. The, dr the draft angle, how much those walls draft in, also affect the part. So um, if it's a casting, you're going to have to have a minimum required amount of 
draft on it to get it out of the parts, injection molded parts, forged parts as well. Now, that being said, that means that this center section here may be a little bit thicker than you hoped in order to maintain a certain profile that you're, it's required in order to make the part rigid enough or strong enough. So as you can see here, I have my extrusion, I'll make this 35, minus 35. So I have a fairly stable, easily modifiable model that now allows me to go in and make changes as required. So again, if I modify this surface, because I, I didn't necessarily tie everything together, and then tried applying a big giant feature to everything all at once, I applied the features independently, intelligently, to each separate body and then eventually came back and united everything together.